Okie dokie, artichoke. So let's see. So, y'all, you know, what I did here was I went to my lab and I printed out the review for the test. So the one thing I really want to emphasize is, remember, y'all, the, the review has 49 questions, right? The test has 20. And those 20 questions come directly out of this review, right? So what I mean by that is, uh, let me see if I can pull something up real quick. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to pull up my question two, and Lada, uh, I'm doing this on my lab, uh, but it's the same question two that I have right here. And I just want to show you all something, and, and Lada, you won't be able to see this because I'm sharing my screen with, uh, with the class from my lab. But I'm going to go ahead and answer this one here, okay? And, and guys, uh, I hope you trust me because, you know, I've been doing this for a little bit of time. And I'm going to say the answer here is going to be plus or minus 8. And there should be an I somewhere in here. There we go. Okay, that's going to be my answer, right? So I'm going to check it. Okay, I got my question right. Now, before I go on to the next one, I'm going to hit similar question. If you notice, the only thing it did is it changed my problem. I know a lot of you can't see this, but it changed my problem from x squared equals negative 64 to x squared equals negative 36. So when I tell you all that the problems that I take them directly from the review, is it going to be the same number you have? Maybe, maybe not. But if it's not the same number, it's going to be something real similar. You see what I mean? So the one thing I want to emphasize is, I say I take them from directly from the review, and I did. It's just that every problem has what we call a variation. It gives you a new type problem, okay? But the problems aren't going to be different other than the number might change a little bit, but the problem itself is the same for the problem. So that's one thing I really wanted to emphasize with you guys, okay? So, anywho, um, what I really wanted us to do tonight, y'all, was this is my time for you guys, is just to ask you, hey, what questions do you want to ask me? Sir, can we do number three? Sure. Can we do number seven? Claro que si. Whichever ones y'all want to do, guys, this is what we're doing, okay? So, again, you know, whatever questions y'all have, ask me. And then, guys, I'm going to share, before I, before I uh, get started on review stuff, hello, hello. Before I get started on review stuff, guys, I'm going to stop sharing this part real quick. And let me see if I can find it. Here we go. I'm going to share this part with you all so you all can see it. Where is it? Is it right here? And yes, you guys. Okay, a lot of you can see this too. All right. So let me see. I think you put something in the chat. I want to make sure. Okay, you're good. Awesome. All right. So, guys, I just want to make sure that you everybody saw this. I did send this out this morning. Um, so, number one, I hope everybody, I hope you all are doing well, guys, and your families are good and nobody's sick or anything like that. Um, so, again, one thing I'm going to go over, number one, the test has 20 questions that come directly from the review, right? So, every question on the test is coming directly from the review. Guys, the test is going to be available as soon as tonight, like at 8 o'clock. Doesn't mean you need to start it tonight, but the test will be, hello, hello. The test will be available at 8 o'clock starting tonight. If you want to, if you want to knock it out tonight, like if you're like, you know what, I'm not working on Wednesday and I just drank four Starbucks and I'm going to do this test tonight, hey, you're, you're more than welcome to get started. The one thing I do want to mention, though, is there is a four-hour time limit, okay? So, guys, what that means is once you start the test, the little clicker starts, right, and it's counting. So if you decide that, you know what, I'm starting on it, you get to like problem four and you're like, eh, I'll work on it later. That timer's still going, okay? So there's a four hour time limit. You don't wanna, you don't wanna like start on it, go back seven hours later because it's gonna say, hey, your time expired, okay? So my point is whenever you decide to take your test, make sure that you carve out some time so that you know that you can do it, okay? If you have to be somewhere at nine o'clock, don't start on the test at eight because now you only got an hour to get it done. Uh, guys, you can use any calculator. So we've used, um, you know, we I pulled up the calculator here for you guys before in class. I want to say I pulled up this one here. So and that one is also on the videos. And then sometimes I use the one that's on my on my iPad. 
it's at graph and calc 83 or if you uh that one guys um, apple started charging for it if you have an android it's free but if you have an apple you can use there's another one it's called calculate 84 it works just like the hundred dollar calculators right other than now it's free uh let's see guys no photo math or anything like that uh you do have a formula sheet right here guys so if you click on this right here it should pull up the formula sheet so you can access the formula sheet at any time and really i mean you can use your notes too the idea here is that i try to put all the really important formulas in one kind of document for you guys so you can see that okay uh guys sometimes when you're working on my lab computer glitches occur right it, it happens with everything yesterday facebook instagram they were down for hours right um these things do happen so when if you're sometimes when you're doing a problem in in my lab so i'm going to see if i can pull this up real quick so it, it's not happening right now but sometimes when i do this nothing shows up here like there's the screen is just blank it's not loading up when that happens all you're going to do close it up just hit go ahead and hit leave come back try it again it usually pops up and it opens up right then again for us okay usually that's the case um we don't usually have any other issues other than that uh let's see so tonight guys all we're doing is reviewing for the test okay so i just really want to make sure are you guys good with like you know how many questions on the test you got the formula sheet you know that you got a four hour time lift i just wanted to make sure that everybody was was good with all that kind of good stuff okay guys uh the test you're going to be able to work on it any day whenever you decide to do it, it you can start it as early as tonight or you can wait till next monday if you want to or you can do it on the weekend right so say uh i'm, I'm not gonna go to church today i'm gonna stay home and do math okay i'll tell the priest that that's why you're not here and uh and then you can you know work on your test or whatever right but guys the test is open for the next few days okay um so anyway i just wanted to make sure you guys were we're good with all that stuff. Let me get back to the review. Let's see. Here we go. Okay. And like I said, y'all, what I really wanted to do today was just answer your questions. So don't be shy, guys. Uh, you got a question, tell me. And I'll even do something like this. And I'll ask you guys, are there any problems from one through five that you all want me to do? And if they are, I will be happy to do it. Anything one, two, three, four, or five? This is the same one. All, all I did here is I just printed it out, right? So just to let you know, the way the way I did it is. Uh, like when you're like, I'm going to go, I'm going to do this. Like I'm going to pull up my question three and I want you to notice, like if I look at my question three here on my lab and I look at my question three here, it's the same one, right? And really all I did was right here under, under get more help, I hit print. And then I said, print the entire assignment. And that's what I did. Yeah. So guys, I'm sorry. I probably should have told that to you guys before. I'm sorry. I, that was, that was my bad. Um, and I didn't even think about it because like in one of my other classes in my statistics class, one of my students said, that's what he does. He prints it all out, does everything on paper, and then he just goes back and just starts entering in the answers. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, guys. I, I should have been better and told you guys about it. Uh, and anyway, when you're going to do it, guys, hit print the entire homework assignment. Otherwise, because it's always on this one and it's going to print one question. You know what I mean? And then, so you'll use the whole paper to print, you know something this big uh and then anyway guys another thing you can do i'm, I'm just making this up just showing just to show you guys when you do this here uh obviously like i'm not connected to a printer here um i don't know how many of you guys have like tablets or anything like that uh one of my another one of my students also has an ipad and, and and even if you have like a like any kind of a tablet, it doesn't have to be an iPad. I'm guessing it works with Chromebooks or even laptops. If you have, especially if you have touchscreen, when you hit print, you can always save it as a PDF. And then there's like these like there's something called Notability. It's something for an iPad, and you can take notes and you can write on your screen, or you can you know I mean there's like notes basically like note taking apps that you can get. They're usually like I paid for one of them and I kind of wish I wouldn't have, but 
you know, you can do all this stuff like on your on your iPad or your tablet or Chromebook or whatever, and then all of a sudden you're just going back and you know, and you can save it like that. So just something to do, you know. Some people still like the paper version, that's fine too. Uh, let's see. Anywho, any questions from one through five that you want me to go over? Tell me which one. Number three. Let's do number three. Okay, so guys, again, remember what I'm saying. This, these are coming directly from, from my lab, right? So number three says, let's solve the equation by using the square root property. So one of the things I like about the direction from the problem, they're telling me what to do, right? So look, I'm going to pull something up. I know, again, um, a lot of you can't see this, but I am using my formula sheet. And at the very top of my formula sheet, there's something here called the square root property. So look what it says. If x squared is equal to k, then x equals the square root of k or the negative square root of k. So all I'm going to do here, y'all, is for my original problem, I'm going to take the square root with a plus or minus on both sides. Now what's going to happen is that this square root and that square are going to cancel. And I'm going to end up with a 3p plus 2 is equal to... Now, I need to see if I can at least simplify the square root of 12. I know 12 is not a perfect square. But I'm, I'm going to kind of do this on the side just so you guys can see. I'm trying to see if I can break this down. Remember what the square root means. The square root means I'm getting pairs. So if you were a little kid, when you were a little kid, sometimes you had a bunch of change or you took your dad's change or whatever, and you would get, take the pennies one, two, three, four, five, right? One, two, three, four, five. I'm doing the same kind of thing, but with square roots, I'm getting pairs. I'm getting twos, okay? So look, I'm going to break this up into two times six. I'm going to break this up into two times three. What do I have a pair of? We have a pair of twos. That means that the number two is going to come outside. This one, since it's not paired up, has to stay inside, okay? Now, if you notice, remember, we still have that plus or minus right there, okay? I'm trying to solve for the letter P, meaning I'm trying to get this piece here all by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take that 2 and I'm going to send it over to the other side. When I cross equal sign, the sign of this 2 is going to change to a negative 2 because anytime we cross the equal sign, the sign of our number changes. And then since I'm trying to solve for the letter P, I'm going to divide everything by 3. And guys, when I say everything by 3, everything. So we're going to end up with P equals negative 2 plus or minus 2 square roots of 3 all over 3. Okay. And here's my final answer. Okay, we got the P by itself. And I know a lot of you can't see this at home, but you've been here before when I've done it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the answer in on my lab. So remember what we had? We had a big fraction, right? And my answer was negative 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 3 over 3. So I'm going to enter that into my lab. Negative 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 3. Everything over. Oh, come on. There we go. Everything over 3. And let's chickety check. And we got it, right? Did that make sense on how I was able to do this one, though? Are we good in, on how we work it out, number three? Any other questions y'all want me to do here? One, two, three, four, five? Anything, anything? Yes, ma'am. Let's, let's, of course, let's do yours. What's your, what's your problem? equals 8 like this? Okay, so similar problem, right? Remember, the first thing I'm going to do here, take the square root on both sides, right? So remember, this square root and that square go away. That gives me 5p plus 1. Remember, I need to see if I can break down the square root of 8. So over here on the side, I'm going to go 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So look what we have a pair of. We have a pair of 2s. So that this 2 is going to come outside, but this one here stays back inside. Am I okay with how I'm breaking down my square root of 8? 
So guys, remember, square root means you're getting pairs. So if you have three of them, you group two, and whatever number you have two of, that comes outside. The other one, the third one, has to go back under the square root. Okay? Now, remember what we're going to do. We're going to take this one, and we're going to bring it to the other side. So right now, look at the sign of the one, y'all. The one is positive. So remember, when we cross the equal sign, what happens to the sign of the one? Negative. Very good. I want to point something out, y'all. When I get to this step, I cannot combine any of those numbers, okay? So you don't have to do an extra step of trying to combine them because you never can, all right? Now, the only thing we're going to do now is we're going to divide both sides by 5. And so we end up with negative 1 plus or minus 2 square roots of 2 over 5. So, y'all, before we go on to anything else, I want y'all to notice in the problem that we had, we basically did the same thing. The first thing we said is, let's take the square root on both sides, right? When I'm taking the square root, y'all, on the, on the right side, I'm putting that plus or minus, okay? And then whatever number I have inside my square root, I'm going to try to simplify that. So what does that mean? I'm going to break it down as much as I can and whatever number I have a pair of, that number is going to come outside. Whatever number I don't have a pair of, that number goes back inside. And then I'm going to take the number that's over here on my left side, and I'm going to bring it across the equal sign. So the sign of that number is going to change. So if it's positive, when I bring it over, it will become negative. Or if it was negative, when I bring it over, it's going to become positive, right? And then the last thing we're doing is we're dividing by the number that's in front of the letter P. So in the problem that we had, the, the one that was on, on my homework, uh, I was dividing by 3, but the one that she had, we were dividing by 5, right? What I want to emphasize, y'all, is the process is going to be the same, right? So a little while ago, I told y'all that I pulled these questions, the, the questions on your test came directly from the review. So if this here happened to be a question on your test, you might get the one that we had, the one that I had over there, or you might get the one that she got, or you might get a different version. But I'm going to do the problem exactly the same way, okay? One thing I do want to emphasize to y'all is if you, like, for this, say this particular problem. If you're like, you know what, it takes me a little while to make sure that I, I can get it right. When you're doing this in my lab, keep going to, like, if you do this problem and you still kind of struggle with it, it took you a little while, do similar questions. Oh, look, similar to even the one that you had, right? We have a 5 plus plus 1, but instead of an 8, we got a 12. But I would keep doing this kind of thing. I would do it a few times to where like, okay, you know what? I hope that question is on the test because I know I'm going to get it right. You know what I mean? Do that as many times as you need to so that when you do take the test, you're like, okay, I can do this. All right. Let's see. Any other questions you all want me to go over? Four, um, let me stick it down here and we'll go four or five. Anything from four or five? Are we good so far? Okay. Yes. Okay. So five or six, either one. Okay. So guys, I'm actually going to do number six because number six involves one extra step. Okay. So very good. Let's do number six. It says solve the equation using the quadratic formula. So guys, again, one more time, I'm going to pull up my formula sheet. Let's see if I can get it. Here we go. Here's my formula sheet. Okay. I want you all to notice something, and I'm, I'm doing it with a little cursor right here. I can't highlight it, though. But do you see where it says ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 on my, on my quadratic formula? That's what I'm looking at. So when I come back to my problem here, what I want to do is I want to make this problem here equal to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, look, these two pieces got to come to the other side. So I'm going to leave this as x squared. Now remember, I'm moving both those pieces, so the signs are going to change. So right now I have a positive 2x, but when we bring it over, it's going to become a negative 2x. At negative 17, it's going to become a positive 17 is now equal to 0. So in the quadratic formula, we're solving problems that look like this. Okay. So in order for me to do the quadratic formula, I have to know three things. I have to know my numbers A, B, and C. So I'm going to ask you all a question. If we do a little stare and compare here, can you all tell me, if you look at this part here and look at this part here, what's my number A? 
one, good. What about my number B? Negative two, excellent. And our number C? There you go. Okay. The next part, y'all, is using the quadratic formula. Again, you don't have to memorize this because you already have it, right? But I told you all you could sing it if you want to. <laughs> okay. And let's see. Well, guys, when I do mine, I go real slow. The first thing it says, a negative. So I'm going to put a negative. Then it says the number B, negative 2. Plus or minus, let's see, B squared, negative 2 squared, minus 4 times A times C, all over 2 times A. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing. So now we're going to fix some pieces. Negative and negative makes it positive. Okay, negative 2 squared is a positive 4. I'm going to take my calculator here, y'all, because I need to take, figure out what's 4 times 1 times 17. So let me turn this on. There we go. 4 times 1 times 17. I know you can't see this loud. I'm just using my calculator. 68. So minus 68 all over 2. Okay. And let's see. So now I have x equals 2 plus or minus 4 minus 68 is a minus 64 all over 2. Okay. All right. So first thing here, y'all, square root of a negative 64. One thing you could always do is you could say, hold on, what is the square root of 64? Well, we know it's 8. So if there's a negative on the inside, that's going to give me that 8i business. Right, so anytime there's a negative, this is when we have our imaginary number. We, this was like the very first section that we had. It was like 7.7 .7 complex numbers, imaginary numbers. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do here, y'all, is if this number here can be divided into both of those, we'll do it. And 2 does go into both of them. So we're going to say, look, x is equal to 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 goes into 8. Four times. So my answer here is 1 plus or minus 4i. Now, remember, guys, I can enter that in exactly as the way as the way we came up with it. Okay. So again, I'm going to pull up my homework. This was number six. So let me go over here. Let me get number six. Uh, save that score. Okay. Let's do number six here. And we came up with one. Plus or minus 4, there's the i right there. And I'm going to go check my answer, and we got it. I want you to notice something, y'all. When I'm writing my answer in, I'm not putting the x equals. I'm just putting what the answer is, right? So you notice how when we did our problem, we came up with x equals 1 plus or minus 4i. The only part that I'm entering in into my lab is just the 1 plus or minus 4i, okay? And guys, remember, I want to emphasize what this means. This really means 1 plus 4i and 1 minus 4i. If you wanted to enter in two answers, you could go like this. 1 plus 4i, comma, 1 minus 4i. You could do that if you wanted to. The, only, the, re, the main reason I wanted to explain that part is just so that we understand that any time I have a problem that has an x squared, I'm going to get two answers. Every single time. I'm always going to get two answers. If I have an x squared, I'm going to get two answers. So when I write it like this, it's easy for me to understand here's two answers. One of them is 1 plus 4i. The other one is 1 minus 4i. When we write it this way, people think it's really one answer. But that plus and minus means I'm going to do two different things. One of them I'm going to add. One I'm going to subtract. However you entered in, it didn't make any difference. Okay. I always just try to do the one just so that you know I don't make a mistake by... Sometimes, and, it, and guys, if this happens to you, let me know, because I can fix it for you. Uh, so look, I'm gonna, let me do something like this. If I were to have entered my answers into 1 plus 4i, comma, 1 minus y, but I got big pinkies. So instead of me hitting the comma, if I hit the period, it's going to count it wrong. Why? Because it says to use the comma and I hit a period. If something like that minor happens to you guys, right? After you're done with your test, you're going to submit it. You're going to be able to review. You're going to see what grades you got. 
you'll be able to see what questions you got right or wrong, okay? If something like that happens to you, and you're like, sir, look, I did the, everything right, but I hit a period instead of the comma. If it's something minor like that, send me a message on Pronto, okay? I can go back, I can look at it, I can fix it for you, I can give you credit. If you get something small like that, just let me know, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, anything like that. So, like, remember that the other day? Was it was it in our class? Was it your class? It was. I don't know if it was you or it was another. Because I got three college Oliver guys, so I'm trying to. I don't remember which one it happened. But somebody had done, and I don't think it was in your. It was actually somebody who I was working with last night. Somebody entered their answer, and they had the right number, but they put parentheses as if it was a point, and it wasn't a point. It was just like the two answers, like three and five, but they put parentheses. I said that's not a big deal. You got the right answer. You might have written it a little bit different. Something like that happens, send me a message on Pronto. Take a picture of it. Hey, sir, this is what I did. This is what the right answer was. You know, can you help me out here? No. Oh. Siri, Siri's listening to me. Uh, I'm not talking to you, Siri. But but something like that, okay? If something like that happens, just give me a heads up, okay? Good, good, good. Let's see. Let's come back over here. So... Uh, Robert, were we good with number six? Excellent. Good, good, good. So, guys, let me let me pull up something here. I'll I'll do it this way. Let me put these three questions up. So I got seven, eight, and nine. Did anybody have any questions, or do you guys want me to do anything from seven, eight, or nine? Which one? Number eight. Let's do number eight. Okay. So number eight here says a project, or I'm sorry, a projectile is launched from the ground with initial velocity of v0 feet per second. And I want you to notice, they give me an equation here, right? So I'm going to write this out. S equals negative 16 t squared uh, plus v0 t. Okay. Look what they tell me v0 is equal to. v0 is equal to 96. So I'm going to put this as a 96 t. And it says... The first part of the question says, find the times when the projectile will, A, reach a height of 80 feet. So this here is going to be equal to 80, okay? The S, guys, is telling me the position of the height. And so all I've done so far is I copied this piece down. The V0 were replaced with a 96. And then since the height is 80, I'm setting it equal to 80. So look, we're going to do this. Let me see if I can move over a little bit. I just want to go for it. I don't have too much mess. Okay, right over here. So S equals, well, I'll put it this way. Oops, that's not my eraser. Negative 16T squared plus 96T equals 8. Okay, what I need to do, I need to solve this equation. So the first thing I'm going to do, y'all, is I'm actually going to move these guys over here instead of me moving the 80 i'm going to move the 16 and the 96 just because i hate doing these problems when the number in front of the square is negative remember we said it when we cross the equal sign these signs are going to change that's going to now become a positive 16 squared that's a negative 96 t that's still a positive 80 and all that means is that my zero is on this side but it didn't really make any difference which side my zero is on okay all right the first thing I want to see if I can do, there's a couple of ways I can do this. One, we can do it like the problem that Robert just asked me. We can use the quadratic formula, okay? We could do that, but I'm probably going to see if I can factor it. And what I'm going to factor, what I really want to see is, can I take this number out of everything that I have over here? So I'm going to grab my calculator. Well, I know 16 is going to go into t, or 16 t squared. That'll just be a t squared. I want to see if 16 goes into 96. And I want to see if 16 goes into 80. So let me turn this back on. 96 divided by 16. Does it go in? Yes. Negative 6 times. That's a negative 6 for the T. Plus, this here should be a 5. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing I want to do here, y'all, I want to see if I can factor this piece. So really what I'm trying to factor right now is just this t squared minus, oops, t squared minus 6t plus 5. I'm just trying to factor this one. So the way I'm going to factor it, I'm going to say, look, let's, 
Remember, the number there is a 1. 1 times 5 is 5. I want to think of all the numbers that I know to multiply the 5. Well, actually, just 1 and 5, right? But I need, to, I need for them to add up to what kind of number? What kind of 6? Negative 6. Look, guys, could we do this? Could we make that a negative 1 and a negative 5? They still multiply to a positive 5 because a negative times a negative is still a positive. But if I add them together, minus 1, minus 5, if I owed you a dollar and I borrowed another 5, I would now owe you 6, right? So look, this is going to be T and T. And then I'm just going to put those numbers right here. Minus 1, minus 5. Okay? So we've already factored this part here. We know this is 0, 16. This is t minus 1. Oops. And t minus 5. Okay. So guys, I'm going to set each of those parts equal to 0. t minus 1 equals 0. t minus 5 equals 0. I'll tell you about the 16 in a minute. When I move that 1 over, that's going to leave me with a positive 1. When I move that 5 over, that's going to leave me with a positive 5. Okay. So, what are the two answers that we came up with? 1 and 5, right? Okay, so uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to share this. I'm going to share my screen with you guys so you all can see what I'm looking at here. And, Loud, I'm going to show you the same thing. Let's see. You got your formula number seven. Lada will do, are we doing number seven right now? I'm sorry, Lada, I didn't know. We're doing number eight? Okay, we'll do number seven in a minute too, Lada. I'm sorry, I just saw your message. Uh, so look, what I want to do here with you guys, and, and Lada, I want you to see this too, is I'm going to I'm gonna share, stop sharing that part here, and I'm going to share my review with you guys, okay? We're working on number eight. Okay, and we said... We said the two numbers we came up with, with were 1 and 5, right? And remember how I told you guys I'm going to enter them. I'm just going to put 1, 5. But I want, to, I, want to, I want to show you guys, if you do this, let me know, right? When you're doing your test, guys, it's just like when you do a quiz. Uh, when you do a quiz, you don't find out if you got the problem right or wrong until the very end, right? I should not be putting parentheses. But if what happens if I do, right? And I go like that, and I say, check my answer. Look what it's telling me. It's not right. If you do this, right, you won't know, it won't tell you until you're done, but if you do that, let me know, you'll get credit for it. What am I supposed to be doing? No parentheses, just one comma five. Check it, there we go. Okay, I wanted to show you though that if you make a mistake like that by putting parentheses, I'm okay with it, let me know, I'll fix it for you. Okay, now, let's do the second part. The second part says, when are we gonna return to the ground, okay? So let me stop sharing this and let me get back to my problem. And then Lada, I will definitely do number uh, number seven. Okay. So <clears throat> remember what our equation was here, y'all? This was our equation right here. S equals negative 16 T squared plus 96 T. We set it equal to 80 because that was the first type. The second one says... When are we going to reach, or when are we going to return to the ground? Okay. So I'm going to take the same equation that we had before. Do it over here where I got some room. There we go. So negative 16 t squared plus 96 t. When we reach the ground, our height now, y'all, is zero. Okay. So just like we did before. I'm going to see if I can factor anything out of it. We know we can take out that 16. We can also take out a T because they both have Ts. So guys, I'm going to take out a negative 16. There's my T. This is going to leave me with a T minus. Remember, 16 goes into a positive 96. Excuse me. A negative 6 times. And then we're going to set each part equal to 0. So negative 16 T equals 0 and t minus 6 equals 0. So from here, if I divide by negative 16, because that's the number in front of my t, that's still 0. When I move that 6 over, that's going to become a positive 6, right? Now, remember what the question said? The question says, when is it going to return to the ground? I want you to think about kind of what's happening here. We have something that's being shot, and it's going like this. 
okay? So this is my ground level. So this is gonna happen at zero. So we're, you know, when we first take off, so we're still on the ground. Oops, this is gonna happen six, six seconds later. So when does it return to the ground? After six seconds, okay? And again, I will share my screen with you guys. Those of you who are here, and I'm just gonna put the number six, and I'm gonna check it, and we got it, okay? Okay, so uh, Laura, let me do number seven, because I saw that you put that in the chat. Let me come back over here, and let's take a look at number seven. All right, and I'm just gonna clean up a little bit of mess here so that it's not too, too messy. We've already done this part, so let me get rid of that. We don't really need it right now. Okay, it says, if a projectile is uh, launched vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 35 feet per second, then neglecting air resistance of height in feet after the ground, uh, T seconds is given by, and they give us an equation right here. What equation should be used to determine the height of the projectile after two seconds? Okay. So the one thing I want to mention here is, remember what S stands for? S stands for the height in feet. And look what T stands for. T stands for the second. So the question is saying, which equation should be used to determine the height after two seconds? So if we're looking at this equation here, which is the one that they gave us, Remember what the, T, what the T stands for? The T stands for the number of seconds. So this is just telling me that T is equal to two. So what I would do is I'd come back over here and I would say, this is what I'm trying to do. And then I would say, okay, that because it's after two seconds and that's what T stands for because it says T seconds. And then what I would do is I would look at my choices here, A, B, C, or D, and then which one do you think I would pick? B, right? B looks like it's going to be my correct answer because this here looks just like that one right there, right? And that would be my answer. So, let me see. Okay, Laura, are we good? I just want to make sure you got it. Awesome. Excellent. Perfect. Okay, so guys, let me keep scrolling a little bit and I'll do this. And then, um, Let's see which was one. this number 12 was the one that you were going to ask me right i know number 12 was probably the one that we were going to go over so guys let me ask you a question what about nine ten nine okay let's do number nine so let me let me get my eraser i was doing number nine earlier before y'all got here but we'll do it again because it's a good question to ask And we will definitely be number nine. Okay, that's good. There we go. Okay. Let's take a look at number nine. So number nine right here is 2x plus 5 over 2 minus 3x over x minus 3. Uh, let's see, equals x. Now, guys, I'm going to think of this as x over 1, okay? Anytime you're trying to solve a problem that has fractions, what we want to do, you want to find what we call the LCD, or the lowest common denominator. Remember what the denominator means. Does the denominator mean the numbers on the top or the ones on the bottom? On the bottom. The easiest way to find our common denominator is put all of them together. What I mean by put all of them together, write it like this, 2, x minus 3. Now, since this number over here, y'all, is a 1, I don't really have to put it in because I'm multiplying, and I know when I multiply by 1, nothing changes, right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this stuff in brackets, and I'm going to think of this over 1, and the way we multiply fractions is we go super, super, super slow, and we go one piece at a time. So I'm going to take this piece right here once, twice, three times, okay? So look, and I'm gonna go like this, two, and then parentheses, x minus three, times this piece, I'm just gonna write it like this, two x plus five. Now there's a minus here, so I'm gonna put a minus. This one again, 
2 and x minus 3 times that guy, 3x. And then a third time, 2x minus 3 and this guy right here. Okay. And then we did the top parts. Now we're going to multiply the bottom number. But I want you to notice, look at this bottom number. That bottom number there is 1. So 1 times 2, go to 1 times x minus 3, still x minus 3. 1 times 1, still 1. Okay. If we did this right, y'all, certain things should start canceling out. Like this 2 and that 2 will cancel, so I'm going to be left with an x minus 3 and a 2x plus 5. And then this x minus 3 and that x minus 3 are going to cancel. I'm going to go real slow. Look, I'm going to take that negative 2 times that 3x. That's a minus 6x. Okay. And then nothing is really going to cancel here, y'all. So I'm just going to put the 2 and the x together. 2x and x minus 3. Before we go on, are we doing okay so far? Okay. Guys, I want to mention this problem is not necessarily all that hard, but it, it's a long problem, okay? So look, let's go real slow. Let's start following this out. X times 2X, 2X squared. X times 5, 5X. We've used that X. We don't need it anymore. Let's do the negative 3. Negative 3 times 2X, negative 6X. Negative 3 times 5, negative 15. I still have this guy, so I'm going to write it down over here, negative 6X equals, supposed to be an equals, looks kind of like, ah, supposed to be equals, looks kind of like a Z. Equals, let's see, 2X times X is a 2X squared, and 2X times negative 3 is a minus 6X. Okay. Now, I'm just going to start putting pieces together. So we have a 2X squared. Let's put these together because they can go. 5 minus 6 is a negative 1x minus 15 minus 6x equals 2x squared minus 6x. Okay. And let me see. Let me get rid of this mess over here. Okay. I can put this one and this one together. So 2x squared. Minus 1 and minus 6 is a minus 7x minus 15 equals 2x squared minus 6x. Okay. And then what I want to do, I want to get rid of this 2x squared. So let me subtract it here, and i got to subtract it there. Okay. And then these 2x squared are going to cancel, and those 2x squared are going to cancel. And we're going to end up with, let's see. Negative 7x minus 15 equals a minus 6x. Okay, we're almost done. Okay. Now, when I get to this step right here, y'all, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get all the x's on one side and all the numbers on the other. So if this is a minus 7x, let me add 7x. Okay. That's going to leave me with a negative 15. Right here, negative 6 plus 7. I owe you $6. I have 7. I'm left with 1. And it's just the 1x, right? And so I'm ending up with x is equal to a negative 15. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom out, guys, so we can see how we started off the problem. This is where we started off right. And I know it's kind of hard to see because I am zooming out, but I'll, I'll zoom in as we go. Okay. So remember, anytime I'm doing this here, my first step always is let's find our common denominator. The way we find the common denominator, take all the denominators, put them together over one, and then start multiplying. And when I say start multiplying, I'm not actually doing any kind of distributing until I've been able to cancel stuff on the top with stuff on the bottom. If I try to multiply it first, it's going to be real hard for me to do the problem. Canceling is going to be done first, and then we'll multiply, okay? What I mean by canceling, y'all, is like this. Like this 2 and that 2 cancel. 
in this x minus 3 and that x minus 3 cancel. If I try to multiply it first and then try to cancel out later, it's going to be way too hard to do. Cancel it first. Once we cancel, then we start multiplying it out, combining like terms, and we'll come up with our answer, right? So if you notice here, guys, again, we came up with a negative 15. So this was number, number 9, I want to say. Yeah. Right here, I'm just going to put negative 15. I'm going to go chickety-check. And there we go. All right, so that was number that was number nine. Okay. So, uh, guys, let me ask you a question. Are you good with number ten? You want me to do ten? You good with ten? You want me to do ten? That one? Okay. So, look what it says. Sally can paint a room in three hours, while it takes Steve seven hours to paint the same room. How long would it take if, you, if they paint the room if they work together? Okay, so Sally and Steve, she does it in three, it takes him seven. So guys, I don't know if I did this in the video or not, but you know, it's been a little while since we had in-person classes and I always like these problems. And before the pandemic hit, I would always ask somebody in the class, and I'm going to ask you because, oops, it was, took Steve seven hours. Okay, do you, all, do you know what MCM is? Anybody heard? Anybody know what WCW and MCM is? MCM, Man Crush Monday, and WCW, Woman Crush Wednesday. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like you got a, I got a crush on this person. Okay, do you have a, do you have an MCM? Who? Just anybody. First person comes to mind. Actor, singer, whatever. Chris Evans. Okay. So look, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go like this. Chris Evans. And I'm sorry, because we've been in the pandemic, I'm not very good with names right now. What's your name? Lauren. All right. So Lauren and Chris Evans are going to be painting the room together, right? And we're going to figure out how long does it take them to work together. Okay, so think about it this way. Lauren can do this by herself in three hours. It takes Chris Evans seven hours to get this done. If they're going to work together, do you all agree it should take less than three hours? Because she can do it by herself in three hours, right? It should take less than that. Otherwise, you're going to be like, hey, Chris, you missed the spot over here. And you're going to be like that watching me as he paints, right? Okay, so we know it's going to be smaller than three. So this is how we do it. We make a little chart that has the time and the rate. Okay. And we say, look, we have Darren. We got Chris Evans. And then we have them together. Right? Okay. So Lauren does this in three, Chris does this in seven. How long does it take together? We don't know, we're gonna call it T. Okay, and then let's see, uh, the rate. If it takes Lauren three hours to do this, in one hour she can paint one third of the room. If it takes Chris seven hours to do this, in one hour he can paint one seventh of the room. And if it takes them T hours to do this together, their rate is one over T. Now, guys, we cannot add the times because we already said it's going to take less than three hours. So we can't say seven plus three, ten divided by two, five. We can't do that because we already know it's going to be less than three. But we can add the rates. We can say Lauren's rate plus Chris's rate is going to be their combined rate. Do you remember a little while ago when we did number, number nine and we said we want to find the common denominator? Remember the way we found our common denominator? We said we're going to take this one, this one, and this one and put them all together? I'm going to do the same thing. Let me ask you a question. What's 7 times 3? 21. 21 with a T is just 21T. And we're going to go like that all the way across. So look, 21T times 1, 21T. 21T times 1 again, still 21T. 21t times 1 again, still 21t. 
Now, the bottom numbers, look at the bottom numbers. The bottom numbers are all getting multiplied by 1. So 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 7 is 7, and 1 times t is t. Now, guys, just like we did a little while ago, I said, look, we want to see if we can cancel some stuff. So 3 goes into 21 seven times. And 7 goes into 21 three times. And this t and that t are going to cancel. Okay. And then now from here, we're going to say, look, 7t and 3t is 10t. And now we're going to solve for t just by dividing both sides by 10. We come up with 21 over 10. Now, remember we said, we said it was going to take less than three hours, right? So guys, if I were to pull up my calculator, and I know, Laura, you can't see this, but I'm just taking my calculator, I'm going to take 21, and I'm going to divide it by 10, and my number should be something smaller than 3, 2.1. We know it's going to be smaller than 3, right? So now, when I come back to my lab, and I say, this was problem number, I think it's number 10, yes. Okay, look what it's telling me here. It says type an integer or a fraction. I don't want to put two point. Let me see what happens if I put two point one. I'm just curious if it's going to take it. Oh, it took it. Okay, it took it as two point one. I probably would have written it though, guys, as twenty one over ten, but it did take it as two point one. The only thing I would tell you is this, um, and let me share this because Laura, I want you to be able to see this too. So let me go like this. Let me go like this, and let's stop sharing that, and let me see if I can get my calculator up here somewhere. Here we go. That's okay. Okay, you can see there's now a lot of, so when we divided it out, we got 2.1. So guys, as long as your decimal stops, like with 2.1, 2.15, 2.158, that's fine. If your decimal ends up being something like 2.1358, and this keeps going on and on and forever, Enter it in as as the fraction, okay? Because then if you start rounding it, then you're making a decision to round it. It didn't tell me to do any rounding, okay? So as long as your decimal stops, you're good. If it keeps going forever, just leave it as a fraction. All right, good deal, good deal. So now let me get back to our problems. Let's see. Lauren, I bet you you're never going to forget how to do that problem now. All right. So, um, I know you had question number 12, right? Yours was number 12. So, guys, let's do number 12, and then we'll kind of keep moving along, okay? So, let's see. Number 12 here is this problem up here at the top, and it's um, solve this, this one here. And, guys, I'm going to do this a little bit of cleaning up here because I do got a lot of mess. And sometimes it's just a lot of mess on these problems, but we'll figure this one out. Maybe a little clean up here. Oh, come on, eraser. Erase. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And let me erase a little bit more. We had done another one earlier during office hours, so I'm just cleaning up some of this mess so that we can do ours. All right. Okay, so now let's come back and let's take a look at problem number 12. And I'm just going to write it down again. Square root of 9x plus 79 equals 2x plus 17. Okay. 9x plus 79 equals 2x plus 17. Okay, so here's our problem, y'all. This is number 12. And what I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to solve this problem. Anytime I have a square root, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to square both sides. Okay? So that square and that square root are going to just go away. And that's going to leave me with a 9x plus 79 equals... When I'm going to square this piece, y'all, the best thing for me to do is to actually just write it out two times and multiply it out. Okay? So look, 2x and 2x, 4x squared, 2x times 17 is going to give me a 34x. Now I've used that one. 17 times 2x is another 34x. 
And 17 times 17, oh, I don't know, let me get my calculator. 17 times is 289. Okay, plus 289. All right, we're going to keep going here. So 9x plus 79 equals 4x squared. 34 and 34, y'all, should give me a 68x plus 289. Okay. Now, what I need to do, I need to move this 9x and the 79 over to the other side. Okay. So that's going to give me 0 equals 4x squared. This right here, y'all, 68 minus 9 should be something like 59 with an x. And 289 minus 79, I want to say, is going to give me 210. Now, before I go on, I want to emphasize the reason why I had to move those pieces over. Anytime I have a problem that has an x squared, I need to get zero on one side. Okay. And since my 4x squared was already positive, I didn't want to move the 4x squared, the 68, and the 289 the other way because then the 4x would become negative. I just don't like doing them when the, 4, when the x squared number is negative. It makes it harder. In my opinion, it makes it a lot harder for me to do. Okay. So. Now, we got a couple of options. One of the options is we could try to factor this in. But the, remember, if we're going to factor this, we would have to take 4 times 210. We're going to get something really, really big. And then we're going to have to figure out what numbers multiply to whatever number that's going to be, 840, and add up to 59. I don't know. What I would probably do here, y'all, I would use the quadratic formula. Okay. And I would say, look, I need to find A, B, and C. So A would be 4, B would be 59, C would be 210. And it doesn't matter that my numbers are really big because we're going to use the formula. We're going to be able to use our calculator. It's not going to be that big of a deal. So look, let's do it like this. Negative B plus or minus big square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2a. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now let's go ahead and start plugging in. Negative. B is the number 59. Plus or minus big square root 59 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right, let's see. That's still negative 59 plus or minus. Okay, this is when I'm going to use my calculator. And Laura, I know you can't see this, but I'm just taking my calculator. I'm going to say, what's 59 squared? Something really big. 3481. 3481 minus, look what numbers are going to multiply. 4 times 4 times 210. So 4 times 4 times 210. 3360 all over, I don't need a calculator for this, 2 times 4 is just, but again, I'm still going to keep using my calculator here, okay, so let me pull it up again, so look what we have, we have 3481 minus 3360, 3481 minus 3360, 121 all over 8. Okay. We're almost done. Negative 59 plus or minus. Guys, I'm going to grab my calculator one more time. And I'm going to say, what's the square root of 121? Nice and pretty. 11. All over 8. Now, Remember what this means. It means we're going to have two answers. One of them is going to be 59 plus 11 over 8. And one of them is going to be negative 59 minus 11 over 8. Okay. So negative 59 plus 11 should be something like a negative 48 over 8. That's a negative 6. So if I owed you $59 and I paid you $11, you would say, okay, but you still owe me 48 
And then negative 59 minus 11 should be a negative 70 over 8. And I can't actually divide it out, but I bet you we can reduce it. We can divide them both by 2. That gives me a negative 35 over 4. So I'm coming up with two answers here, y'all. I'm coming up with negative 6, and I'm coming up with a negative 35 over 4. Okay. Now, again, I would much rather do... I would much rather do the uh, uh, use the quadratic formula, even though my numbers are big. What was I doing? I was using my calculator. What's 59 squared? I don't know. Let me figure it out, right? What's 4 times 4 times 79? I don't know. Let me figure it out. Because if I was trying to factor it out, remember what we said we'd be doing? We'd be coming back over here, and we'd say, what's 4 times 210? Uh, that's 840. And then let's make a list of all the numbers that we know multiply to 840 but are going to add up to 59. That would take me much longer. Okay, that's why I wanted to use the formula. All right. So now, remember, we got our two answers. We're supposed to check to see which is the right answer now. So I'm going to come back to the original problem. Remember, the original problem was 9x plus 79 equals 2x plus 17. So one of the answers we came up with was a negative 6. Let's check the negative 6 number, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go 9 times negative 6 plus 79 equals 2 times negative 6 plus 17. So this is a negative 54 plus 79. And let's see. Okay, here we go. Negative 54 plus 79. Oh, I don't know. Look at my calculator. Plus 79. 25. Anybody know the square root of 25? That's 5. Okay, let's take a look over here. 2 times negative 6, negative 12. Plus 17 is also positive 5. So it looks like negative 6 is, is going to be an answer that's going to work. Because we plugged in negative 6, we got the same thing on both sides. Okay? Didn't mean that's going to be the only answer, but that one is working so far. The other answer we had was something that looked a little uglier, negative 35 over 4. Okay, so I'm going to do that again over here. So it's just going to take me a little bit longer to do it, y'all. I'm going to put it like this. Like this. I'm going to think of that 9 is 9 over 1, 35 over 4 with a negative plus, I'm going to think of that 79 is 79 over 1 equals 2 over 1 times negative 35 over 4 plus 17. And I'll think of that 17 over 1. Okay, so let me go slow here. My denominator here is going to be 4. i got to take my calculator and multiply what's 9 times negative 35. 9 times negative 35 negative 315 plus now i want you to know something since my denominator here is four i need to make this guy with a denominator of four as well so four times one is four what's 79 times four i don't know let's see 79 times four 316. Okay. all right let's work on the right side this two will cancel with that four and leave me with the two so this is a negative 35 over 2, plus I need to get this guy to get a common denominator of 2 as well, so I'm going to multiply it by 2. That's 34 over 2. Okay. We're almost done. Look, we have a common denominator, so we can add those together. If I owed you $315 and I had $316 in my pocket and I gave you the $315 that I owed you, how much money would I be left with? A dot, right? Over 4. Okay. Over here, same thing. Negative 35 plus 34, negative 1 over 2. And then the square root here, the square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2. But if you notice, they're not equal. One of them is positive, one of them is negative. So the only answer that's working for us here, y'all, negative 6, right? And I don't know, you can't see this at home, but I'm going to pull it up for everybody here. And we're going to go to number 12. And our answer was negative 6. 
Mi si parece que Richard Ray Dyer. Okay, so we still got some time, guys. I want to make sure that we're able to answer, um, you know, as many questions as we can. That was number. That was number twelve. Okay, but it is 7.04 and we get out of here at 7.45, so we got about 40 minutes. Are there any other questions you guys want to ask you that you've had a chance to look at or that you're like, you know what, I don't even know how to do this one and let me know so that we can get it done. I just want to make sure that you guys are good. You know what I mean? And I'm going to check, as you guys are looking, guys, I'm going to check for something real quick. Go like this. So the review is going to stay open until Thursday, guys. Okay, so the review stays open until Thursday. If you got questions between now and Thursday, let me know. You know, don't don't hesitate. You know, I'm what I'm saying is I know we still got 40 minutes, but we're not probably not gonna be able to get to every single question tonight. So if between today and Thursday you come up with a question, let me know and I'll definitely answer for you. Okay. Uh let's see. Any other questions y'all want me to go over here? Anything, anything? Don't be shy. Twenty two. Let's do it to it. Let's see. Twenty two right here. Okay, perfect. So it says, decide whether the equation or not, whether or not the equation uh, has a circle as its graph. If it does, give the center and radius. If it does not, describe the graph. Okay, let's see if we can do this one here. So here is our problem. So guys, anytime I'm doing these problems, what I'm going to do, I'm going to rearrange the pieces. I'm going to put all the x's together. I'm going to put all the y's together. So look, I'm going to write out this x squared, and then I'm going to put the 12x right next to it. And I'm going to leave a little bit of space over here. Okay. And let me erase some of this mess over here, y'all, so that we don't get too confused. And then I'm going to put the y squared and the 2y next to that. So let's go like this. Plus y squared plus 2y. And I'm going to leave, leave a little space there. And then this number right here, guys, the number that's by itself, the one that doesn't have an x or a y, I'm going to move it to the other side. So I want you to look at the number right now. It's a 33. When we cross equal signs, what is it going to become? Very good. Negative 33, right? Okay. So what we're trying to do here, we're trying to make this thing look like the equation of the circle. And guys, there's a process in how you do it. It's not really a formula. And that's why I don't really have a formula. It's not in the formula sheet because it's not really a formula. But the, formula, the process says, let's take the number in front of the x. So the number in front of the x is 12. Let's divide it by 2. So the number I'm going to come up with is 6. Then I'm going to take that number 6, I'm going to put it like in a little box, and I'm going to square it. And the number I'm getting here is 36. Now that number 36, I'm going to put it right here, plus 36. I'm also going to put it on the other side, plus 36. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, y'all, i got to do it to the other. Okay? Now, now that we did that, we did it together with the number in front of the x, we're going to do the same thing, but instead of the number in front of the x, we are going to take the number in front of the y. So the number in front of the y is 2. What was the first thing we did with that number earlier? We divided it by, by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. Then we took that number 1, we put it in the box, and we squared it, and we got the number 1. Remember what we're going to do with this number now? We're going to put it right here, a plus 1 and a plus 1 over there, too. Whatever I do to one side, i got to do it to the other. All right. So good deal, y'all. Now, this part here, we're going to factor it. And I'm going to give you a hint. It's always going to look like this, x and the number squared. This piece right here is going to be the same thing, y with something squared. Now, the way you're going to figure out, what am I going to put right here, it's going to be this number. Look at the sign of that 6. The sign of that 6 is positive, so that's going to be a positive 6. Same thing here. Look at the sign of that 1. It's positive, so this is going to be a plus 1. 
it's always going to be that number right before you square it or right after you divide it by the number two. Now, guys, in our case, in this one here, both of them were positive, right? It was a plus 12 and it was a plus 2. If it would have been a minus 12 or a minus 2, I would have a negative number on the inside, okay? Now, let's, let's take a look at this part here. Minus 33 plus 36 plus 1. So I'm just going to get my calculator real quick. Minus 33 plus 36 plus 1, 4. Okay. Now, when we're going to find if this is the equation of a circle or not, the general form for the equation of a circle looks like this. Where the center is the point H and K, and R stands for the radius. So the one thing I always want to mention, y'all, is when I look here and then I look here, whatever numbers I have here, I'm changing their signs to find the center. So when I look at my problem that I have right here and right here, I'm going to say the center of my circle, i got to change those signs. Negative 6 and negative 1. And then I need to find the radius. This number is the radius being squared. So to find the radius, you take the square root of whatever number you have there. So the square root of 4 is just 2. So the center of my circle is at negative 6 and negative 1, and my radius is 2, right? So what I would do over here, y'all, and I'm going to pull up this problem. This is number 22. I'm going to pull up this problem on my lab so we can see it. So I'm going to come down here, this is number 22, here we go, and I'm going to say, okay, so I'm going to pick uh, choice A, and I'm going to write it as a point, negative 6, comma, negative 1, and then the radius of my circle is 2. Again, guys, if, if you're doing this on a test and you forget to put parentheses, but you have the numbers, message me, okay? Did he check? Good, good, good. Okay. Did it make sense how we were able to go through it, though? Another one similar to this? Yes. I'll tell you what, let's do this. So, look, let's go right here. Let's go similar question. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'll copy and paste it here. So, all I'm doing here, y'all, just doing a similar question. And let's go like this, copy this here. And bring this down, and we'll do it right here. Okay. So if you notice, same type of problem, slightly different. Some of the numbers are a little different, not all of them. Remember what we're going to do. We're going to write out this x squared plus 12x. We're going to leave a little space. y squared plus 6y. We're going to leave a little space. And then remember, we're going to move that 44 over. Negative 44, right? All right, just like we did earlier, I'm going to take the number in front of the x, 12. We divide it by 2, we get the number 6. Then we take the number 6, we put it in the box, and we square it, 36. And right here, y'all, a plus 36, and the same thing over here, a plus 36. Now, we're going to do that same thing that we did right now, but we're going to take the number in front of the what? The y. So look at the number in front of the y. It's a 6. Remember, we're going to divide it by 2. That's 3. We're going to take that number 3. We're going to square it. That's going to give me 9. So right here, y'all, I'm going to put a 9. And a 9 over here is on the end. I'm going to ask you a question and see if you remember. It should be x. What should come over here? Anybody remember? What? Plus 6, right? Always that number right there. The number right after you divide it by 2 or the number before you square it. And then y, what am I going to put over here? Uh, not 9, but plus 3, right? The number right before you square it. The number before you square it, or after you divide it by 2. 
Okay, and then over here, y'all, we're going to take negative 44 and 36 and 9. We're going to add those together. That should give me a 1. Okay. All right, let me ask you a question. Do you know what the center is? Do you remember what I'm supposed to do with... You got it, my friends. Negative 6 and negative 3. What about the radius? 1, right? Because you're taking the square root of that number right there, and the square root of 1 is still 1. So look, we're coming up with negative 6, negative 3, and the radius being 1. And we're going to come back over here. We're going to say the graph is a circle with a center of, we said, negative 6, comma, negative 3, with a radius and the radius of the circle we said was 1, and we're going to go chickety check, and we know we got it, right? And I guarantee you that if you were sitting at home and you said, you know what, I just want to make sure I'm good, and you did that, I bet you you could do it exactly the same way, right? Now that we've done it a couple of times. Good, good, good. Excellent. So again, that was number 22, right, which was right here. Okay. Any other questions here, y'all? We still got plenty of time. We still got half an hour, so I just want to make sure that we're good. 24? 44. Okay, let me scroll down to 44. And I'm going to take a little sip of water, too. Here we go. Yes. Let's do number 44. Okay, so let's take a look at number 44, y'all. And here's our function. It says let f of x equals 2x minus 1. Let h of x be equal to negative x plus 1. We want to find h of f of 5. Okay, so guys, again, I'm going to show you something here. I'm going to pull up my formula sheet, okay, because I want you all to notice something here on my formula sheet. I'm going to scroll, mass, mass. Mas, here we go. Okay, so what I want y'all to notice right here, y'all, and I know I can't write on the I can't write on my screen, but I want you to notice what I have right here. And then I want you to look at this part here. So it's kind of I mean I know the letters are a little bit different, but the problem is in essence kind of the same. So look how I'm gonna write it. The one that comes first, that's gonna go on the outside. The one that comes second is on the inside, and then inside of that is the X. Okay. So the H is going to come first, then the F, and then what's on the inside, in this case, is the 5. Now, just like we've done before, I want you to think about this piece right here, F of 5. If I know that that's my F of X, then I bet you we could find F of 5. Because we would say, let's plug, let's come back over here. And everywhere we have an x, let's plug in a 5. That 10 minus 1, that's going to give me 9. So now that's going to be h of 9, because f of 5 is the same thing as 9. So now if I want to find h of 9, I'm going to come back over here. I'm putting the negative there, because there's a negative. That's negative 9 plus 1. That ends up being, in my case, negative 8. So right here, I'm going to put negative 8. And this is number 44. And so right here, I'm going to put negative 8. Check it. Oops. Good question. Good question. Any other ones here? Y'all want to go over ones? Anything? 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 Twenty-five. Come back. Twenty-five. Right here. Okay. Twenty-five. So look at what we're, at, look what we're trying to do in twenty-five. We're trying to find f of three and f of negative one. So f of three. Remember the number here. That's the x number. So when we're looking for f of 3, we're trying to figure out what is the y coordinate when x is equal to 3. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to say, look, here's x equals 3. What's the y coordinate? Oh, it's also 3. Okay. 
Did, did I lose you? Look, look, I'll show you. This. Look at this one. F of negative 1. I'm going to come back to this point. When x is negative 1, what's the y coordinate? There you go. Yeah, look, you can even do the same thing for 26. Look, f of negative 2, negative 2 hooks up with, there you go. f of 6 hooks up with, there you go. And you got it. Take it away. All right. Any other questions here, y'all, about anything? Robert? Okay, uh, let me see. Let me see. Okay, and you said it was on the quiz, though? Okay, let me do this. Let me see if you come here. Ah, this is what I wanted. You come here. Here. Quiz. Here we go. It was one of the last ones you said? Okay, let me try this. Let me take a look at number 10. Not that one. This one here? Okay, so let me do a little copy and paste here, y'all. And again, this is coming directly from the quiz. So let's see if we can do this one. Let me go like this, copy it right here. And let's put this up here. And we can go like this. Let's see if we can find the spot. Here we go. Okay. So here it says, find the slope and winders up of the given line and then graph it. Okay. So guys, when I'm going to do something like this, remember what I'm, I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about this y equals mx plus b every single time, right? Again, I want to point something out real quick before I keep going. That y equals mx plus b. Oops, where is it? Ooh, right here. It's going to also be in my formula sheet, okay? And notice what it says. Uh, the slope is m, and the y-intercept is the point 0 and b, right? So when I come back over here, remember, this is my slope, and the point 0 and b is my, my y-intercept, right? So let's do a stir and compare. Let's look at this equation here, and let's look at this equation here. Remember, m stands for the slope. What is the slope in this problem? What's the m number over here? 2, right? So that's going to be my my slope, right? And then it's going to say, what's the winer set? Remember the winer set, y'all? It's always zero and then whatever the number B is. So this one here is going to be zero and negative eight, right? Okay, and now what are we going to do? Now we're going to have to graph it, right? So remember the way I'm going to graph this thing, y'all? That's going to be the point where I'm going to start on, okay? So I'm going to do this in green so you can see a little bit better. So here's zero and negative eight. And then remember, y'all, since our slope here ended up being 2, I can think about that number as 2 over 1 because this is my rise and that's my run. So what does that mean I'm going to do? I'm going to go up 1, 2, and over 1, up 1, 2, over 1, up 1, 2, over 1, up 1, 2, over 1. And you, when you're doing this on my lab, you know you're only going to do one of those points, right? And then hit the little line button. But your line's going to end up looking something like that, right? Does that make more sense than how I was able to do it? Yeah. 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 Oh, good. Oops. That's good. Okay, good, good, good. Let's see. And let's see. It's kind of like number 32, right? It's kind of like this one here. Yeah. Any other questions for y'all want to ask me about anything about, guys? 39? Yes, let's do number 39. Here we go. Okay, so look what it says. Suppose the point negative 5, 4 lies on the graph y equals f of x. Uh, determine the point 
on the graph of y equals g of x, where g of x is equal to f of x minus 4 plus 3. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do here, remember, when we have our regular function like this, y equals f of x, my points are in the form x and y. And in this case, the point that we have is negative 5 and 4. So the reason why I'm writing this, I just want us to understand that's the x number, y'all, and that's the y number, okay? Now, what we're going to do, we're going to figure out what would a point look like on g of x where g of x is equal to f of x minus 4 plus 3. Okay, so I'm going to pull this up real quick. I know, Laura, you can't see this, but I'm going to pull this up again from my formula sheet. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at my formula sheet up here, and I'm looking at that part where we have the translations, the vertical and the horizontal translations, okay? I want you to look at this piece right here. See how I have that x minus 4, and that's on the inside of my parentheses? When I pull up my formula sheet, when it's on the inside and it's a minus, look what it tells me I'm going to do. I'm going to move to the right. Whatever number my c is, I'm going to be moving to the right that number of spaces. So in this case here, I'm going to say, I'm going to have, oops, we got that on there. In this case, I'm going to say, look, I'm going to move to the right four spaces. So if I'm moving to the right, what I'm really doing is I'm taking that number, that x value, and if I'm moving it to the right, if I'm going this way, I'm actually adding the number 4 to that number. So I'm going to put a plus 4 right here. So negative 5 plus 4, that's going to leave me with an x number now of negative 1. Okay. Now, I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to look at this plus 3. Notice how that plus 3 is outside of the parentheses, right? So when I come back over here and I said, look, if my plus number is outside, that means I'm moving it what direction? I'm moving up, right? So I'm going to say, look, I'm going to be moved. This part here tells me I'm going to be going up three spaces. So that means with this number, if I'm going up three spaces, I'm going to add three to that. Number. And four plus three should be giving me seven. So that would be the point that I would now end up with. I would now end up with a point negative 1 and 7. This was number 39, right? This was number 39. So again, I'm going to pull up my homework. Let me get rid of this because I don't need it. Let me come back one more time. Where's my? Here we go. And let me come back to my assignment. Let me go to my review. And... You said this was number 39. Here we go. And same problem, right? And we came up with a negative 1, comma 7. Right? And we're going to go chickety check. Okay, let me pull up my review again. And guys, I want to show you, I want to do like 38 because 38 is real similar to, to 39. And I want you to notice what 38 says. It says, look, um, these points here are on the graph of y equals f of x. Uh, determine, three, determine three points in line on y equals g of x. And look what g of x is equal to. g of x is equal to f of x plus 2. So notice something here, y'all. The plus 2 is on the outside. And just like we did before, if the plus 2 is on the outside, let me come back to my formula sheet. There we go. If it, all I'm going to do is I'm going to move it up two spaces. That's all I'm going to do here. So what I mean by that, y'all, is my x numbers aren't going to change. But my y numbers are going to change in that I'm going to add 2 to each of those. So 4 and 2 is going to give me 6. 6 and 2 is going to give me 8. Negative 3 and 2 is going to give me negative 1. So let me kind of clean this up because there was a little bit of mess here. But these here would now be my new points. And all I did is I went to the Y numbers and I just added 2 to each of those Y numbers. The reason I didn't change the X numbers was because 
there was nothing inside here other than just that X. The only time I'm going to change the X numbers is if it has F and then parentheses X minus 3, X plus 5, something like that. If it's inside those parentheses, then I'll have to change my X numbers as well. Since the plus 2 is on the outside, that's just telling me, hey, my X numbers aren't going to change. My Y numbers, though, are all just going to go up because it was a plus 2. If it would have been, say, a minus 5, I would have subtracted 5 from each of those Y numbers. Any other ones you all want to do? Anything, anything? That's right. And because that plus two is outside the parentheses, when I look at my formula sheet, I say, look, if it's plus two, if it's plus something outside, it's being moved up, right? So that's why I'm saying that this part right here, y'all, is going to help me so much in doing these problems. And that's why I try to put everything, I try to put it all in one document so that you're not, like, hunting for it. Like I said, guys, you can use your notes, and definitely use your notes. But the formula sheet is just, like, at least it has the formulas kind of condensed, right? They're all right here. Instead of you, like, let me scroll, scroll, scroll. Oh, here it is. And I don't know if, if any of y'all actually printed out the notes because it's a lot. Or if you're just kind of going on your laptop or, you know, looking through it. Um, you know, that's kind of why I put it over here. Any other ones that you want me to go over, y'all? And it's from 2.8, the homework? Yes. Okay, so let me pull this up here. Like this. And let me come back over here. And you said 2.8. Uh, I'm sorry, number which one again? 15. Let's do number 15 from 2.8, y'all. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and paste it also. Here we go. Copy this here. Okay. And let's go like this, and like this, and like that. Here we go. Okay, so it says, uh, the tables give some uh, selected ordered pairs for the functions f and g. Uh, why can we not determine f composed with g of 1 from the information in the tables? Okay, so let's see if we can figure out why. If I look at this piece here, y'all, remember how I would write it? I would write it as f of g of 1, right? So the first thing would tell me, okay, what is g of 1? Well, g of 1 here, I'm going to use this part, g of 1 would be equal to... 9, right? Okay, so we know that g of 1 is equal to 9, and f of g of 1 is the same thing as f of 9. But f of 9 would mean I have to look at this function here. Remember what this number stands for? That number there, y'all, is the number for x. And if I look at my f function here, if I look at the top numbers, or is the top number ever 9? No, that's why I can't do it, because I have to be able to say f of 9, so there would have to be a 9 here, and then there would be something over there on the bottom. But because it doesn't have it, then we say we cannot, we can't determine that from the table of values, right? I can do g of 1, because I can say, look, here's g of 1. When x is 1, the value of g was 9. I can do that part, but I can't do the second. Does that make sense? Right. And that's why I would pick part A. Good, good, good. Any other questions you all want to ask me about? Anything, anything. You all feel good about like 42 or 43? Any of these here? You want me to, look, this number 47 was kind of like the one we just did, right? It's kind of like number 15. So I'll tell you what, guys, there was, yeah, and this is kind of similar to, let's do, let's do, let's do this one here. Just to make sure that we're good with this here. Because we got about 10 minutes. I just want to make sure that you guys feel okay about these types of problems. We'll do something like this here. 
So I want, just want you to take a look here. I'm trying to find g of f of 3. Remember what that means I'm going to do. I'm going to find g of f of 3. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the f function. f of 3. f of 3 is 7. Good. And then we're going to find the g one. So we're going to come over here and we're going to say g of 7 is 8. And there's our answer. Did I go too fast? Let's go back again just to make sure we're okay. Just to make sure we're okay. Remember what we're doing. We're finding, oops. Come on, pen. Don't quit on me now. G of F of 3. So the first thing I want to find is F of 3. So here is my F function. When X is 3, the F value is 7. Now, since we're using g, we're going to use this one, and we're going to say when x is 7, g is 8. That's why I put the 8 right there. Right? We'll do the same thing for the second part. We're going to find f of g of 4. Right? So the first thing I'm going to do is find g of 4. So g of 4 is equal to 7. Then I'm going to come back over here and look at the second one, and I'm going to say f of 7 is equal to 3. So that one there is going to be 3. Right. And then we'll do this one more time, g of g of 7. And let's see, g of 7 is 8. And g of 8, can we do g of 8? So we're going to say... It's undefined, right? Because we could do the first part, but we couldn't do the second. So it's undefined. Okay. And I'll tell you what, let's try one more similar. Let's take a look at this one, y'all. Again, I just want to make sure you guys feel good, feel good about these problems. So let's take a look at the first piece here F plus G of negative 2. Remember what this means f of negative 2, g of negative 2. What does that mean I'm going to do? I'm going to go when x is equal to negative 2, right there. The first part says, what is f? f is the blue graph. If I go up, how far up do I need to go to? 4. So I'm just going to write this down right here. This is the number 4. Okay, let me get rid of that. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go to x is negative 2. Now I want to hit the g. g is the pink line. How far up do I need to go to? 3, right? What's 4 plus 3? 7. Why am I adding? Because there's an addition in the middle. Right? That's why I'm adding. Okay? Let's try the next one. We'll go about it the same way. F minus g of negative 1 means f of negative 1 minus g of negative 1. Okay, so now, instead of going to negative 2, I'm going to go to negative 1 right there. I'm going to go to f, which is the blue function. How far up do I got to move? 1, right? I'm just going up 1. Now I'm going to go to g. How far up do I got to move? 2. What's 1 minus 2? Negative one, good. Okay, got it. Okay, let's do the next one here. F times g of zero it means f of zero and g of zero. So let's do this. Remember, f is the blue function. Here I am at zero. I'm already hitting the graph of that, right? So that number is going to be zero. G, we're going to go up. We go up to one. What's 0 times 1? There you go. Okay. Now, we're going to do this one last time. F divided by G of negative 1. We, did, we actually did these numbers earlier. I should never erase them, but oh well. F of negative 1. Here's negative 1. We're going to go up till we hit the F number. We went up 1, right? We're going to go up till we hit the G number. So my answer here is y. And we got it, right? 
I always, I, I don't know guys, for me, I always like these problems because I'm looking at the picture. And the picture, a lot of times, it just helps me figure out how to do it. And I don't have to worry about plugging in numbers and all that kind of stuff. I can still do the same problem without having to plug in so much type stuff. Uh, and whether I do it using a picture or whether I do it using like a table, right? It's the same sort of concept, right? Anything else? Anything, anything? All right, so guys, remember that I am going to stop recording this, so let me do that, and let me come back over here. And Lada, I hope this was helpful. I know you were watching this from home.